Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer, welcome back to MotoGP 2018, and welcome back to the Motorcycle Grand Prix of Germany from the Saxon Ring. Let's get started on the replay and I'll tell you what's going on. So, we did the development programs. I'm really, uh, I can't tell you how, how serious I am about those development programs because that's really where all the improvements to the bike are coming from. The improvements to us as a rider are based on our finish, and how we can level up like XP points. But the improvements to the bike come from the development program, same as uh, F1 2017, F1 2018, any of the Codemaster F1 games. Similar setup and I'm, I'm really taking it seriously and I'm really being very diligent about doing the development programs every weekend. So we qualified on the pole by about two tenths of a second. And as you can see, particularly like turns one through six at the Saxon ring and I, I say that like oh you know turns one through six at the Saxon ring like I know the track or something it's really the first time I've ever been on the track and I can just tell you that turns one through six are so slow and so tricky and so technical uh, really kind of challenging for me I can also tell you that setting up for turn seven is the key to the rest of the lap if you bobble turn seven if you don't nail turn seven then everything after that is just no good. So uh, I really start fighting right, right out of the gate, and we're back to about oh, so one, two, three, four. We're about to back to about P7, but it's okay. We're we're not terribly worried now. We are we are racing against some people that we don't normally race against. Uh, Aaron Kane, Bazeki, and Jorge Martin are up there, but there are also a couple riders that I haven't seen a whole lot before. And we were able to get back a couple positions there and really kind of start making our way through. But this is turn one and turn one, like all the way through to turn six is just so technical and just really have to be precise. You can see me like jostling the bike and kind of, you know, bouncing it, trying to get right in there. Ideally, I want to have that smooth, flowing, curving entry and exit just absolutely like pick your entry, lean it in, carve through, and then come up out of it and not have to make any corrections midway through. But not there yet. I'm still making a lot of mid-corner corrections, and I know that really kills my lap. But, um, you know, what can I do? I'm learning. So, uh, so we lose some time on turns one through six. If I nail turn seven, then everything after that goes well. If I don't nail turn seven, then everything after that goes horribly wrong. So, and this is coming down to, yeah, this is either, this is the Saxon curve or the next one, man, the, the lack of an overlay, I, I will say it every episode if I have to, the lack of an overlay on the replay is really kind of mystifying to me. I don't know why, I mean, it's clear with the TV coverage and everything, it's clear that they want you to, to watch this replay. Even if you're not recording it for YouTube, you're still watching it, it would be nice to know what's going on. Man, I don't know, I don't know. It's a mystery. Uh, but yeah, we're working our way back up, and I want to say we're in about P5 now, P4, P5. And this is sort of, I you know, I don't want to give anything away, spoiler alert, but this is sort of where we stay for the rest of the race. Uh, and we are getting a little better on that one through six complex, but it's still, man, it's just so tricky, so tricky. And I don't know if I'll get better at it. Well, hopefully I'll get better at, at it with experience. But I don't know if I'll get better through complexes like that as I level up myself and the bike, or whether that's strictly like a question of learning how to play this game. Don't know. And it's a it's a shame because the turns that I want you to see, it is. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find a better camera here. Uh, that's the rider. The camera is here. Is it here? here it's here okay let's see if we can get a better camera through here I think this may be static TV I hope it doesn't cut back to that tank cam not a fan of the tank cam really can't see a lot so right uh, down across the start finish I want to say yeah this this guy in front of us is uh, he's a new 
He's a new rival, uh, D Dijin Antonio. I want to say we'll check on the leaderboard at the end. But yeah, I haven't seen him before, haven't raced him before, but I ended up scrapping with him for three or four laps. And yeah, really tricky. Re uh, really tricky through here, but fun. Definitely fun. It's just so hard to, to stay in on those apexes. And I am tuning the bike a lot more pre-race, but it's still... I'm, I can tune a car. Mm, I can tune a car pretty well as far as tuning a motorcycle. Still voodoo to me, but I'm learning. See, this is where I don't want to be. Right, so this is turn seven right here. And how you set up turn seven, right? Because then you have to dive into this one and dive into this one. Yeah, see, it's, it's all bobbled. And then throw it into this one. And then these last two left-handers are not super technical, but it's like you need to be set up for it. So I'll, on the next lap, I'll show you again uh, how critical turn seven is. But yeah, man, really liking this. And I, I said last episode, I had no idea that we were in for a 19 race season. I, I, for some reason, I just had it in my head that MotoGP did the full 19 or 20 race calendar. And then Moto2 did like 17, and then Moto3 did like 15, and then Moto... The juniors did like 10 or something. I don't know. I, I'm not sure why I didn't make the connection that Moto3 and Moto2 do the full calendar with MotoGP. I know. Yeah, see, all those corrections. It just kills me. Every lap that kills me. That's our guy, Kane. I want to say Martin might be in front of him. Right, so. Set up coming out of six. And then right down here. Right down here. This this turn right here is the key to the whole lap. And I, I'm hoping one of these. I, yeah, a little better. A little better. Yeah, I mean, that's not the worst. Not the worst lap I have. But if you can set up turn seven properly, it just tees up the whole rest of the lap. Still have the killer brakes on this bike. Or that could just be an AI thing, because it seems like both on the Honda, NSFR, and now on this uh, KTM GT250, we have unbelievable braking. Even before we made any improvements to the bike, we had unbelievable braking. So that could just be the AI has a, a slight deficiency in late braking. I don't know. So we'll do one more lap with trail cam and then go back to TV coverage. I, I would like to see one good lap, but you know, when I'm racing, I can't like necessarily remember all this stuff to know which lap was really good and which lap wasn't. So we'll know one when we see one lap. Now I do, toward the end of the race, as I'm getting more kind of a rhythm and a familiarity with the track, I do start defending the apex a little bit. And that's a, that's a nice feeling when you can feel that you're offline and you know, see the proximity arrow and know you're about to get past and just bring the bike into the apex and, and close that door. All right, not a good setup to turn seven. Oh God, not a good setup to turn seven. Yeah. It, it just tears up the whole rest of the lap. And I've got the AI. I'm bumping it up a little bit every race, but it's uh, just pain train right behind me. And if I make any mistakes at all, instantly, instantly uh, get passed by three or four or eight riders. However, I can do that, which I'm happy about because when I first... <laughs> <laughs> when I first started playing the sim, I could not, uh, I couldn't pass anybody. It was like, just try to get on pole and, and don't let anybody get in front of me because if you do, you're not getting it back, right? And I think this is the this guy D. Oh, I don't want to say the, the name wrong because I think it represents a real rider, D. G. Antonio. Take a look at the leaderboard. 
one good lap. One good lap from turn seven on. those corrections. I just want to be smooth. Smooth, I tell you. Not quite there yet. Alright, here we go. Give me a good lap. Better. Better. There you go. There you go. And then set up this one. And throw it in here. You have to throw it in here so early where you end up out in the gravel to the left. There you go, a little better. But I really do feel like it, it all kind of flows from turn seven. All right, finally in on the apex. Beautiful. Wish I had a leaderboard. I can tell you what lap we're on. The, um, now there's this one, but yeah, this is the one you don't pop up out of. Because yeah, I don't think you'd be necessarily tucked when you're going through turns that tight. It's pretty, but it's not very realistic. Slap. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, that's that's closer to the line that I want, and then just drift right out to that curving on the left. This is a fun game, though. It really is. I haven't seen it go on sale yet either, which is which is weird because I get notifications from Steam for just about everything, and it's like this game does not go on sale. It's only been out for a few months, but still, you think every now and then at least. All right, what are the cameras we got? That one. That one. We'll go back to TV for a while, and this is uh, yeah, this is my guy. I'm trying to pass, and I I want to say. Uh, we're we're fifth right now, and we we scrap with this guy for a couple laps. By the time we finally get him, the race is essentially over, and P3 is like seven or eight seconds. In, in the the gap to P3 is seven or eight seconds, so it's there was no way we were going to get up there. Like we barely got up to P4. There was no way we were getting to P3. But you know what? I'll oh Jesus! <laughs> I just realized we were like drifting through there. You know what, I'll take it. And I said this in my F1 2018 video from last week, that as gamers, we we sort of forget sometimes that you don't always win. Like in real life, you don't always win. Uh, and this is the, I've only been playing this game for a couple months, so to think that you know I would win my first season or, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily realistic. Let me just focus on learning to ride and learning to handle traffic and gradually bumping up the AI and the winds will come in time but I I don't want to just dial back the AI so that we can win our first season like what fun is that what do we have to work toward after that so we we're in P, P3 right now in the overall standings for points for the championship which is not bad you know for our this is our first season in Moto3 that's not bad so there's no reason to to feel like you know we need to win every race or whatever. Uh, top three finish in the championship would be fantastic. So we'll see how it goes. But this, I would call this a challenging race for sure. I really had to focus and work at it, and and I can tell, you know, any lap, like I'm, if I make a mistake, I immediately get passed. 
and that's very much like real life. That's what real racing is, is just kind of being patient and waiting for the driver in front of you or the rider in front of you to screw up and being positioned that you can immediately take advantage of that mistake, gain the position, and then now it's your turn, right? That same driver or rider is directly behind you. Now it's up to you to not make a mistake and get passed back. And if you can continue putting together good laps, if you were faster than that rider or that driver and they were just sort of holding you up and you were waiting for an opportunity to pass clean, now you're in front of them and you're gonna pull away. And you, you do that till you move up to the next rider or driver in front of you and repeat the process, pass them. And if you've got the, the tune and the skill to get to P1, then you win the race. But it's not, uh, I'm trying to move away from that arcade mentality where you just kind of do whatever you want and there are no consequences. Uh, I, I like the idea of you know, these games being so so accurate and so realistic that if you make the tiniest little bobble, the tiniest little mistake, you immediately get passed. You know, real consequences for being careless or for a lapse in concentration. Works for me. And I think, now, uh, and I feel like I keep saying the name wrong. DiGiantonio? DiGiantoni? Uh, I finally start to pull away from him, but then I see in the in the leaderboard when we're done that the rider in P5 directly behind me when we finish is not the rider that I was scrapping with. So either his tires got burned up and he dropped back or crashed out or something. I don't know, but but yeah, there's in fact, let's do this. One more. There we go. Yeah, there's quite a pain train right behind us. Look at that. And they are there's probably seven or eight riders within one second of us. So it's like, make a mistake and, and get passed by half a dozen riders. So don't make a mistake. It's actually kind of a nice view. Right, and I think this may be it. I think that might be it. No leaderboard. Hard to, <laughs> hard to know what lap we're on. Oh, just chewing up that curve. Yeah, I think we're nearly done. Because once I, once I get into P4, I'm just chasing P3, but it's so far in front of me, uh, there's no way I'm gonna catch him unless there's a, unless three riders crash each other out in front of me, there's no way I'm gonna make up another position. But again, that's real life, that's fair. This is a little bit, uh, like, I get kind of self-conscious when it's just me by myself, when there's no other riders around me, because it's like you can see all the mistakes I'm making. You know, when there's a lot of traffic, you can sort of explain it away, like, oh, you know, we were scrapping a little bit, but when you're by yourself, it's like, now you're just, you're just taking a really terrible line. I need to get in tighter on those apexes, I do. I'm hoping as I continue to level up the bike that we will be able to do that more accurately. And I, I genuinely am curious if, as we level up the bike, as we level up our rider, if it doesn't become easier to carve those apexes. Because right now it feels like I'm just chasing them constantly. One more, is that it? Looks like one more. It feels like I'm chasing the apexes, which is a very frustrating feeling because they are, uh, you know, obviously the apexes aren't going anywhere. They're not moving. Uh, it's just a question of setting up a line and getting in on that apex, getting the lean right, and then just kind of feathering the throttle, especially in this tight stuff, to stay right, right in on the apex. Accelerate out. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket scientists rocket scientist it's not rocket science it's just really tricky to do it consistently and i'm curious if it will be easier to do it consistently as the bike levels up we'll find out in the next couple of weekends
was that long right hander down the hill. Yep. Yeah, I want to say this is Rodrigo behind me now, and the Giantoni, the Giantonio, uh, has dropped back a couple. But I feeling like that's Rodrigo now. But either way, we are we are done. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. One more. You know, the funny thing is these laps, I feel like they're getting better as we get closer to the end of the race. But it doesn't matter. Like, it's too late. Damage is done. I'm also noticing how much I'm sliding. And I'm not I'm not sure if that's a, kind of a trick of the replay, like the way it's rendering. But it looks like I'm just sliding the, the rear wheel a lot. A lot more than I want to be. Right there. Hmm. And I'm, that has me curious about uh, tire wear and if I'm tearing on my tires. Well, there's a, there's a tune option for that in the garage. You can tell your engineer I'm burning up my tires and they will make adjustments to get a little bit more life out of your tires. I, I don't know that that's super critical. Moto3, I think Moto2 and MotoGP, it's a lot more critical, but for now it's not that big a deal, I don't think. Right, there's the end of the race, so let's go back to our leaderboard. And uh, to Giantonio. Gian Antonio. De Gian Antonio, right? Uh, he got passed by Rodrigo. And then Martin and Kane are in front of me. Uh, Bezeki finished in P7. And then this guy, Kaito Toba, I've not seen him before. I've not seen him before. So let's see where we end up on points now. A to proceed. Still in third, but we're 37 points back now. And we got a decent lead over fourth, so if we can continue just having consistent finishes up front, we should be able to hang on to at least third in the championship, but we'll see. We'll see. I think we got 10 races to go. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of MotoGP 2018. And we'll see you next time.